Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel and we are on to part two of our cat tutorial um, and we're going to be focusing on some of the fur around the eyes, um, maybe some around these whiskers um, but kind of coming up and around uh, and starting on that tabby fur. If you have any questions, comments, don't forget to leave them down below and we're just going to get started. So I'm starting with my warm grey one and I'm going to just start by bringing in this area. So I'm following that fur direction which is kind of on a tilt. And I'm just going to bring this in nicely here. I've left a little gap here because I want that to uh, be the cold grey one. So I'm just going to grab my cold grey one and we're just going to come in with the cold grey one. over the top just going to take my white as we did before and just push that pigment into the paper I'm not pressing too hard with the white and then I'm taking my warm grey two and I'm just going to start to bring in that shape so we can see where the marking is going to sort of start and it's also adding some detail into the white fur here as well. Take that, uh, my cold grey one. Okay, so back to the um, one grey one and I'm just going to come in with the base layer now we've got again a few white hairs so I'm going to add them after with a slice tool okay one grey one is the base layer then I'm going to take my beige red And I'm using circular motions because you can see the skin here. So I want it to look nice and smooth. And again, it's going to blend over that eyelid. And then I'm taking my warm grey two. And back to that warm grey one. And then I am just going to take my white just to help blend. Like so. And we're just going to repeat that across this section of the eye. So coming in with circular motions with the warm grey one. And you can see I'm not pressing too hard. Um, because I know I'm going to use that white to burnish and push the pigment into the paper and the reason I'm doing that is because I want it to be this nice pale pink colour. If I press too hard everything will end up being a bit too dark. If I want it to go darker then I'll, I'll just come in later. So I'm just coming in all the way across here with the warm grey one first of all. And then over the top of that with the beige red. Again, blending into those areas that we've already got down. This will help create that nice smooth blend. Okay, and then over the top with the warm grey too. Okay, and then I'm actually just going to grab my cinnamon and again just coming over where I've already got already drawn in. Circular motions again, 
because I want it to be nice and smooth. Picking up my beige red again. So I've made it a little bit darker closer to the eye and then as we come away from the eye I'm just lightening it up with the beige red. And then again I'm going to take my white to burnish so I'm just pushing that pigment into the paper. Okay, like so. Okay, taking my warm grey one, uh, I'm just going to lift this bit of um, graphite, my warm grey one. Now I'm pressing slightly harder here because this is going to start off with the markings on this cat's face. And then I'm going to take my warm grey three. And I'm just going to follow that fur direction, constantly rotating the pencil so that I'm using the sharpest point. And then I'm just going to run over that again with a warm grey wool. So I'm going to get my ivory. I'm going to use ivory over the top here. Run that down. Okay, back to that warm grey free. Um, I'm just taking my core grey five. So we've got some really darker markings of fur, and they are light little lines. I'm just adding them in, but and then lightening my pressure as I come up there. Okay. That's that warm grey free, just to help blend here. Um, my cold grey two now. Blend that downwards into that white fur, as well as upwards. I'm just trying to get a nice smooth blend between all these markings. My cold grey wool. Okay, and then I am going to lift the graphite, my ivory, uh, no, I'm going to take my one grey one as the base layer and then I'll go over the top of that with the ivory. So one grey one, not pressing too hard, and then the ivory. Just broken the tip of that, don't press as hard as that. <laughs> It does happen sometimes, don't worry if your pencil lead snaps. Okay, now taking my Bista, um, you want a nice sharp pencil again. And with the Bista again, following that fur direction. So starting, so we're starting to curve kind of over the head, but the fur here I can see is going kind of straight up. But, uh, but at an angle. So rather than coming sort of across straight, you can see I'm kind of building up the vista upwards and across at an angle here. I'm going to take my nugget. And then I'm just going to run over the top again with the ivory. And then I want the burnt umber. This is going to add some nice yellowish tones within this bit of the fur, blending downwards as well. Okay, and then I want, um, um, I think we want the Van Dyke brown. A bit more of a neutral brown here just for these darker parts. So I'm just kind of mapping in the colours that I can see. Okay, and then my cold grey two on that edge. Back to the Van Dyke brown. 
and my beige red. Burnt umber. So I'm just going over. And this is what I do. I do go over and over just till I've got a really nice layer of colour. And as you can see, we're really starting to bring this in. Now I want this area to blend a bit nicer than it is doing. So I'm going to take my gold and sort of run this up this part of the face, blend into that browner area. And I can see it's sort of coming down here, so I'm just going to take my nugget, uh, my bister, just blend that very gently downwards. And then I'm using that ivory, again, kind of pulling the colour down, so I'm using it in the dark area and bringing it down. And that should helpfully, uh, hopefully, hopefully helpfully, <laughs> uh, Give us that nice smooth blend that we're looking for. Okay, like so. Then I'm going to take my one grey one. Again, not pressing too hard. Go back to that gold. And then my one grey two. Um, Like so. Right, now I'm taking my beige red again over the top. That warm grey one. And then I'm just going to run my ivory to add that hint of nice peachy yellow that we've got going on. see all these uh, the beige red all these color changes are very subtle but so so worth it especially when we start seeing the final piece sort of come together right now we've got a little stripe going on here so i'm going to map that in so i'm just going to take my warm gray one just following the shape of that little stripe and then we want our burnt ochre and I'm just going to follow the shape there. With the burnt ochre. I'm going to run over the top of that burnt ochre with my raw umber to add that yellow tone. So taking that raw umber. just over the top here and then I'm just going to run again the ivory and just push that into the paper so back to the warm grey one as a base layer um, and this is where we've got some nice graying tones so I'm going to take my uh, warm grey two first of all and again, I'm just building up little fur strokes and the colour that I can see. Blending into that area we've just mapped in. And take my cold grey one just to add a bit of a blue tone because I can see a little bit of a blue sheen. So I'll add that cold grey one. Okay, and then I am going to take my... Um, I think I'm going to use my nugget first of all. And what I'm going to do is I'm just kind of following from this bottom part, just following that darker sort of tabby markings that I can see. And then I'm going to go over that with a burnt umber very lightly because I don't want it to be too yellow toned. But just enough.
I'm just going to take the burnt ochre as well and run it through that part of the head. Okay, and then I'm taking my warm grey free. Adding some fur detailing here. Back to that cold grey too. So I think I brought that marking a little far down. So what I'm going to do is with a clean uh, Tombow razor, I'm just going to lift that marking. Now you should be able to do this if you've used light pressure. So I can just push that back a little bit and then get my cold grey warm over the top. Back to this burnt ochre because it's coming along the edge of this eye and up. A beige red. Okay, and that looks a lot better. Back to the warm grey one. I'm just going to lightly map in here. Now at the moment it does look kind of messy down here, but once we start really bringing in the rest of these markings and the definition of the fur, it's really going to start to make sense. Again, I'm using light pressure with the warm grey one because I'm going to go over the top with the ivory. And a bit of a harder pressure with the ivory. And I'm using the warm grey one sort of before the ivory just to kind of knock back and dull down this ivory colour just a touch. I don't want it to be too vibrant for my piece. Again, if you if you want more of this yellowish tone of the ivory to come through, use it as the base layer uh, on its own, um, if that's what you want on your piece. And then I'm going to take my burnt ochre, nice sharp pencil, and again, I'm just following that nice orange tone and the fur direction that I can see. And then I'm just lightening that pressure towards the edge of the head there. So this area needs to be a lot darker, so I'm just going to do another layer, a bit of a harder pressure here. And then I'm just going to run my ivory again over the top. This will just help smooth it out, which obviously we want some detail within here, but the detail we can add. So I'm actually going to take my gold. The gold is really good for adding these yellowy detailed areas. And then I can come over again once I've done some detail work with this gold with my burnt ochre. Okay, so then taking my burnt ochre again. Going over the top of that. Okay, I'm going to take my cinnamon. And then very lightly. On that edge there. And blending it into that burnt ochre. Back to the uh, burnt ochre. Again really trying to bring out the details and the colour okay and then i'm going to take my burnt umber because we've got some um nice darker tones here so i'm just going to come in with that uh, burnt umber fairly hard pressure just map them in And take my uh, my vista. Okay, 
and then my Van Dyke Brown. Just a few little strokes. And then once again the ivory. Especially in this little on the edge of this head. I want it all to look quite soft on this edge. Like so. So you can see we're really starting to get some nice colours showing through for our little cat. Picking up my warm grey one again. Nice and light pressure because I'm going to use the ivory. I'm, I'm finding that the ivory over the top of the warm grey one just works really well. Okay, so the ivory over the top. And then I'm just going to take that beige red just to help blend this area upwards. So that we get that nice transition between these two sections. Like so. I'm going to take my cinnamon just to map out this little marking first of all as it comes up here. And then I'm going to take my burnt ochre over the top. And remember, it's important that you're following that fur direction. Blending that burnt ochre downwards. Now I use the cinnamon underneath that so that I can blend into that beige red area really nicely. So I take my beige, that was the cinnamon just over the top again, and then the beige red just to really help blend and then I'm just going to take my white over the top because I don't want this area getting too dark so I'm just going to knock it back a little bit with the white back to my burnt ochre I'm just going to add a little bit of tone okay beige red My burnt ochre. Again, I'm just trying to make these nice orange stripes pop a little bit more in areas. Then we want to take our warm grey two. And you can see I've used the warm grey two here, so it's like an extension from over here as we come up this part of the markings. So I'm making sure that everything matches. And then I'm going to take my gold, again it's going to add some nice detailing following that fur direction. I'm just going to take my beige red and blend here so that it blends these two sections together nicely. And then back to my warm grey too. Right, and now we've got these nice dark, uh, darker stripes coming in. So I'm going to use my Van Dyke brown. Again, it's nice and sharp. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to map in the fur lines. Again, just following the shape of the fur and the shape that this darker marking is making. I'm going to take my burnt umber as well and just go over that. And then back to my warm grey too. And my ivory just to up that yellow hint again. 
contact brown very gently just bringing out that depth again within these markings burnt ochre wondering whether maybe a bit of the brown ochre would help um, get the brown oops the brown ochre this is a really nice yellow undertone okay right we're starting to get there now we do need to use the slice tool on this piece which is why i'm making sure this is the one gray one I've got a lot of layers because when I use the, the slice tool, I can then come in following that fur direction, especially in these lighter areas. add some detail and then I'm just taking that burnt umber just because we have used some of the slice tool just to add a few more darker hairs there okay back to the warm grey one so this kind of fur looks um, complicated at first but once you break it down into like these smaller steps you can see it's really starting to come together this is at the bottom of the ear so we'll work, we'll work this section and then maybe we'll do some of the fur underneath the eye uh, and then the ivory again Okay, so that's our base layer. I'm also just going to take a bit of this beige red so that we can blend again these sections nicely together. So if you can hear my dog moving about. Okay, I'm then going to take my brown ochre first, very lightly. Now we've got quite a few fur changes in direction here, so you want to make sure you're really looking at this reference photo. So brown ochre first, nice light layers, especially in that corner there. And then it's coming down here. Okay, I'm also just going to take my raw umber. So this is now all about building up some nice depth within this fur and some colours within this fur. Again, following the fur direction. Short pencil strokes. These strokes here are a little longer because it's longer fur. But not too long because it's not long curly fur like you'd imagine in a spaniel ear. I'm going to bring it down here as well. Okay, and then I am just going to run over that again with the ivory just to push it back a little bit. I find this really helps just to really build up depth. You're adding the tones and then pushing them back and then adding more. Okay. And then I've got my Vista. So you can see we're using all these like brownish tones with these yellow undertones to them. Now we will blend this area in uh, to this skin like area soon and just mapping out the fur, like the, the fur that's a bit more dense. As it comes down this area it's a bit sparing so we'll work on that after 
and I'm leaving gaps as I'm building up this vista. Okay, and then I'm just going to take my burnt ochre where I can see those nice orange tones. Really pretty cat. So we want to add all these colours in the face. Okay, and then I am going to take my burnt umber. Start to bring in that darker markings that I can see here. Right, so I'm now going to start to blend this fur into this area here. So I'm going to take my Vista and you're going to use sort of small pencil strokes, but quite sparingly. Hopefully, as I'm knocking on my pencils. Just follow that fur direction very sparingly, bringing in some little fur details. So you can see we're adding fur, but it's very, very sparingly. And I'm going to do the same here. Okay. I'm going to take my raw umber and just, oops, what's wrong with these pencils when I sharpen them? Right, I'll just do the same. Very, very sparingly. Okay, I'm just going to take my warm grey two, just blend that into there. So they dread. Right, like so. And then I'm gonna take my gold. my ivory over there so can you see how we're now starting to blend that really nicely into um this part of the area uh, of the eye area and then i'm going to take my cinnamon and my one grey two just over the top of that cinnamon. Okay, and then back to my vista. A few little dots to show that it's shorter hair as we come down here. Okay, back to that raw umber. Coming from that corner here. Very light pressure. And then I'm just going to run my ivory. Over the top. Okay, my vista. Just a little bit there. Now, I don't know if I've got enough layers down, but we will see with the slice tool. It's a few little white hairs. Now I may need to use my brush and pencil product to do that. But I'm just going to come in again following the shapes. Like 
think so. <laughs> okay, and um, we've got like the top part of our cat. So let's get some fur in uh, a little lower down her face. Okay, so going back to my warm grey one as our base layer. And we're going to get some of this fur in around the bottom of the eye. And this will just help set the eye in place as well because we've not got as much fur at the bottom like we have above the head. <sighs> okay, and then my ivory over the top. Especially here now because we are really going to start bringing in some of these nice yellowy orange tones okay so i'm going to start off with my burnt ochre following the fur direction again because we're curving around this eye and i've only done a little section so that i can just slowly build it up And then we're taking our vista. My green gold. And then the burnt sienna, very lightly. And then back over the top of that with the burnt ochre. And the ivory. Sienna. And I'm just going to bring that burnt sienna in here as well. Okay, taking my gold now and again following that fur direction. Over the top of the gold with the burnt ochre. And then uh, we're going to take the uh, vista. And then over the top of that with the ivory. When I'm going over with the ivy, I'm pressing fairly hard just to really push the pigment together back with the vista. And the burnt ochre. Okay, and then I'm just going to take my uh, warm grey one. And then you're going to take your brown ochre and you're just going to sort of lightly blend upwards so it blends this orangey yellow section into that warmer grey section there. Like so, so you can see we've started to bring in that nice marking um, underneath her face. Uh, back to my warm grey one. Oops. Okay. Ivory. And 
Right, so I'm going to start off with the burnt ochre and I'm just going to, quite harsh pressure, just to map in where we've got that darker stripe, which we will really darken up, but I'm just going to map it in where it starts with the burnt ochre. And then I can blend outwards here. So again, I'm only doing little sections just to make it a bit easier and to work out what I need to do. Take our cinnamon, blend that downwards. And again, I'm following the fur direction. I'm going to get my brown ochre. Just going to take my burnt sienna because this is going to end up blending in otherwise. To darken up this little stripe. Okay, back to the brown ochre. And then I'm going to take my ivory, uh, actually I'm going to take my gold first, just to add some details. And then the ivory. Once again, over the top, to the vista. Back to that burnt sienna. Okay. And then I'm just going to take this burnt sienna as well, run it along here. And then the cinnamon. Oops. Back in with the ivory. Like so. Then taking my cold grey warm. Circular motions. And over the top of that cold grey worn with the white. Okay, and then I'm going to take my nugget, nice sharp point, because we want to blend here. With these nice fine markings. And then taking my cold grey too, following that fur direction, just starting to build up some depth into this white muzzle area here. I'm going to take my uh, warm grey too as well on this edge. And then I'm just going to run over the top of that once again with that white to push the pigment and burnish the pigment here. so and then i'm just gonna lift the graphite here take my cold grey one and this is where we're getting into loads of whiskers uh, going over that with a warm bite So I'm not going to do too much of this area because this is going to get a bit fiddly. 
I think what I will actually do when I do this area is I will erase all the whisker lines, uh, taking my warm gray uh, cold gray two, um, and I will ignore where the whiskers are. Now, if you don't have the brush and pencil product, what you will want to do is with the whiskers uh, before you finish doing this area is um, come in with your white pencil and press nice and hard or your indenting tool um, and that way your whiskers will stay white. I'm going to add them after. So this is the cold grey too. Um, and then I'm going to take my warm grey too along this edge. And just blending so it all looks nice and smooth. Uh, my burnt ochre. Here. As well. Okay. Taking my... Um, I'm just wondering actually, I think what I'm going to do it actually is stop at this point. I know it's a bit of a shorter uh, tutorial again. But I think the next part is we'll get the ears in. Let me zoom you out. So I'm stopping because I think the next part is we'll get the uh, top ear in, get the ears drawn in, and then we can bring in kind of the rest of her face as we work our way down. Um, that's the way that I want to do it. Um, so yeah, I am going to stop this part here. I know it's a bit of a shorter one, but there's been lots to do and getting this tabby fur is going to be a little tricky. So doing it slower is probably for the best. Any questions, leave them down below. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next part. Bye, everybody.